morning! Welcome to the Shed School! Oh yeah! Welcome! It's a new week, it's a new day! Oh yeah! Good morning! Good morning! Good morning! Uh, welcome to the Summer Shed School with me, Mr. Bates! Hope you're doing alright! Did you have a good weekend? Oh, it was lovely, wasn't it? So much cooler! So much cool. I must say, so much cooler! So much nicer! I must say, I'm not good in the heat! Not good, not good when it's too hot outside! I can't do it! I just can't do it! Uh, You'll be pleased to know that Mabel's doing well, my dog. Uh, she has been very well behaved all weekend. She had lots of visitors, got more visitors today. Just, she's been so good and she's so much bigger now. So much bigger. I don't know if you've ever had dogs at home or cats. And they grow so quickly, don't they? They start off really, really, really tiny. And then suddenly, before you know it, they're really big. And she's quite big now. I say quite big. She's probably only about that big. But she's quite big. Anyway, um, I'll stop talking about Mabel because um, it's not about Mabel. It's about you and your learning. Um, good morning. Let's see who we've got in the shed today. Good morning to Arush. Good morning, Arush. Good morning to Elo and Kishan. Good morning. And now, Kishan's going to be six on Saturday. Exciting. Happy birthday for Saturday. Even though it's a few days away, I'll sing happy birthday to you. Even though it's really bad, because I'm not very good at singing. Good morning, and happy birthday. And morning to Harry. Good morning to Salma as well. Good morning. Good morning to Michael, Zach and Theo. Morning, chaps. Morning to Hayley, Ella and Emily. Good morning. And you said good morning to uh, Nanny or somebody. I can't remember who it was now. Uh, oh, there we go. To Grandma Dan Danusha. Danusha. I've definitely got that wrong, because that's not a name at all. But happy... Uh, happy birthday, Grandma. Happy birthday, Grandma. Um, <laughs> um, good morning to Toby as well. Good morning, Toby. Good morning to Sophia. Good morning. Good morning to Summer. Good morning. Good morning, Chloe K. Good morning, Chloe K. Good morning to Sophia in Spain. Good morning to you in sunny Spain. Um, who else have I missed off my list? Nia and Callum are here as well. Good morning. Good morning. Um, lovely to see you all back, ready to go. Whoopsie, drop that. Um, fantastic. I know. Toby, I can't believe it. I know, right? It's the last week. <laughs> it's the last week of the shed. Oh, how sad. Oh, dearie me. I don't know what we're going to do. It's the last week in the shed. It's our sixth week of the summer school. <gasps> we've done nearly, we've done five weeks already. I can't believe it. But hey, look, if you missed any of the weeks, they're all up online. So they're all up on YouTube. They're all up on Facebook. Do pop onto YouTube, click subscribe, click like um, to the videos, and they're all up on there. So if you did miss any of them because you're on holiday or you're camping or doing something really, really fun, they're all up on there so you can watch them at any time. Um, so don't be too sad because we will be back in the future, but don't worry. Well, hey, we've still got another week to go. We've got this week to get get through first. Um, good morning to uh, Ad Adam. Adam in Egypt. Good morning to you. Good morning to Oliver. Good morning, Oliver. And good morning, Arthur. Morning, Arthur. I uh, hope you're doing well. Right, let's get started with today's lesson. Remember, all you need, piece of paper and a pen. That's it, really. And a head. As long as you've got a head on you. Have you got a head on you? I think you've got a brain. I'm pretty sure you have. If you've been with me for the last five weeks, you certainly have. Right, ready, let's go. Doodle 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 Oh, yeah. I'm ready to learn. Are you? Fantastic stuff. So, coming up in today's show, we have obviously got... So, I say obviously, you, this, you might be joining for the first time. It might not be so obvious for you. Uh, we have obviously got some... Oh, it's raining. <gasps> Haven't heard that in a while. It's raining in the shed. Um, super, sorry, we've got some uh, super spellings. Uh, we've got another 16 spellings for us to conquer this week. We've got some terrific times tables, which this week we're looking at our four times tables. In Mighty Mass today, we're going to be doing some number bonds to ten. And in English, we're going to be looking at first, second, and third person. What does that mean in context to our English writing? What does that mean, first person? What are you talking about? First, second, third, we win, winning a race? We'll explain all a little bit later on. And, of course, we've got some fantastic phonics, and we've got a lovely sound for you to conquer today. It's a great one. It's a nice one. Big special thanks to our partners, Twinkle. Um, do check them out, mums and dads, www.twinkle.co.uk. Fantastic resources on there, particularly for going back to school. They've got lots of bits and pieces up on there as well, um, dealing with anxiety and all that type of things. As well as uh, White Rose Mass, do check them out, www.whiterosemass.com. <clears throat> they have the full schema of work, uh, which covers the whole year. So no matter what year you're in, a primary, one, two, three, four, five, um, 
it breaks down what they'll be learning in each year and the week. So do have a little look. If you're concerned about what your child's learning at school with regards to their maths work, have a look over that. That gives a baseline of understanding of what they should be covering, what you should be looking at over the course of the year. Good morning to Conrad. Conrad's here. And good morning to Manu. Good morning to you guys. Hope you're doing well. Sorry, singing. Sorry, I shouldn't sing. Right, and <laughs> let's get started with today's lesson then. Let's do a little bit of spelling. Super spelling. Oh yeah, super spelling. Super spelling. Right, same as normal then. Super spellings. We've got a new 16 this week. We've actually got 20, but I'm going to do 16 today and then we might add a few more in later in the week. We've got 16 to do. All you need to do is try your best and write down the spelling on your piece of paper or on your whiteboard, okay? Don't worry if you get it wrong. We will go through them afterwards. You can give them a tick. You can write down the correct ones. All I say that if you make a mistake during your spellings today, don't panic. You, um, throughout the course of today, have a look back over that spelling, so then when we do them tomorrow, you're going to be more likely to get them right. Okay? Obviously, it's not guaranteed. We've got to keep practicing. That's why we do it every day. Um, super. Missed what you said. Where can we read that? Oh, um, uh, Rach is here. So, good morning, Rach. Um, Rach, um, with regards to, I'm not sure what your question is, but I'm guessing it was towards the White Rose Mass. Have a look at their website, www.whiterosemass.com. They have the full schema of work that your child should be covering over the course of the year. Some schools use different forms of schemas, so they might use something like Abacus, uh, which we use at our school. Um, they might use White Rose, they might use a bit of both, they might use some other things, but it gives you a kind of a structure to understand what they should be covering and how in depth they should be going in that year. For example, year ones, you wouldn't then tend to do heavy times tables. You'd look at tens, fives, and twos. You know, that type of thing. Um, so it gives you a broader understanding of what, what's broken down. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. Do, if you do have any questions, do let me know. Um, we will be doing a Q&A session uh, later on in the month about going back to school and about getting you set for September. Um, any worries, any concerns, do ping them over to me, info at theshedschool.co.uk, or just pop me a message on Facebook. You're more than welcome to. Drop me a little one. Just saying hi. Just going, hi, bye. Anyway, right, let's crack on with our spellings. Ava, you ready? She's here, of course she is. Let's go with our spellings today. First one, number one is put. Put. I like to put cheese in my hair. What? That's crazy. No one puts cheese in their hair. Naomi's here. Morning, morning. Number one is putt. Number two is could. Could. Could old uncles lead dogs? That's a clever one, that. Could Mrs. Moo, go to the moon. Find out next time in Mrs. Moo and the moon. So we've got put and second one, could. All right. Number three. Remember, we've got 16 to do. You're doing a super job. 16 to do. Try your best. Write them down. Don't matter if you get them wrong. Number three. House. House. I have a tiny house. Such a flat. Amazing it. Amazing it. Okay, house. Remember, sound out those words if you're not sure. House. Okay, give them a go. No harm in trying. There is harm in going, no, I don't want to try that. Go try everything. Give it a go. Number four. Old. Old. The man behind the counter was very old. I'm so old, I shouldn't be working. <laughs> I'm an old man, working in a pet shop. Would you like a pet? No thank you, old man. No thank you. Okay, so number one, putt. Number two, could. Number three, house. Number four is old. Old. Okay. Number five 
is two. Now this two is as in too many. Too many. Or that boat was too big. Okay, slightly different spelling that one. Don't get caught out, two. Remember, we're gonna go through these afterwards. It doesn't matter if you get them wrong. All that matters is that we learn from them for next time. Next one, number six, bye. Bye. Now this bye is not bye. This bye is, um, I wrote a story, uh, the silly poems book by Mr. Bates. It's that bye. Or I lived by the park. Bye. Can't believe it's raining. Can't believe it. That's been weeks. I haven't had rain there for ages. At least we're waterproof now. Not like we did in the early days when it was wet in here. <laughs> okay, so that's number six, bye. <clears throat> number seven, should be able to, I think you guys will get this one. Day, day. <clears throat> I had a lovely day in the washing machine, said the plate. <laughs> Saying that, plates don't go in washing machines. Uh, trousers do. So that's day <clears throat> number seven. You're doing a wicked job. Okay, number eight. <clears throat> number eight would bring it to halfway. Number eight is made. Made. Now we did that split diagraph sound, didn't we? A. It's not an A, it's an A. What makes it that A sound? What do we need to put at the end of made? There's certainly a D, but there's also something else that makes that A an A. Can you remember? Oh, tricky licky. Can you remember? Okay. Very good. Next one, number nine. There's another split diagraph sound. It's time. Time. Excuse me, sir. What's the time? And we have done I, that lovely sound, I, split diagraph, I. Not an I, it's an I, isn't it? But what makes it that I? It's two letters, isn't it? Time. It's not raining in Old Minster, Arthur. It might be raining later on today. You never know. Hopefully it'll be nice and sunny for you. It's raining here. Phew. And I've got to go out on my motorbike in a minute and get wet. That's going to be rubbish. Uh, that's time, number nine. Number ten. Okay, it's an abbreviated one. I'm. I'm. As in, I am. I am doing something great today. Or you can abbreviate it to I'm. I'm. If you're not sure, have a guess. Okay, we're going to go through these afterwards. As always, have a guess. Best thing you can do. That's number 10. Number 11 is if. If. If I were a rich man. La da 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 da. If. <laughs> okay, if. Nice short one, that one. Number 12 is help. Help. Help me. I'm stuck down a well. Uh... I'm not stuck in a well. I'm in a shed. Don't panic. Don't, don't worry. I'm not in a well. That's number 12, that is help. Okay, four more. We're nearly there, you're doing a wicked job. Next one, it's a proper noun, it's Mrs. 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 Magoo had lots of things to do. It's Mrs. Magoo. Mrs. McGee liked to drink tea and had a wee, Mrs. McGee. That's number 13. Can you hear that? That's really raining. 
I hope we don't leak again. <laughs> that is really bad. Oh my goodness, it's chucking it down, Dorsey. Look how rainy it is. Whoa! Whoa! So rainy. Um, where do we get to? <laughs> we got to Mrs. That's number 13. Number 14. Number 14 is called. Called. I called my mum on the telephone. Called. Okay, to call someone, if you did it in the past, you called them. Past tense of call. Can you hear me over the rain? <laughs> Number 15. We've got two more and then we're done. Two more and we're done. Number 15 is here. Here. It's very rainy here. <laughs> here. Ah, it's slowing down now. Ah, that's good. Really hope we don't get wet. No, we should be right now. Here. Okay, that's number 15. Here. And your last one for today is a nice short one. Off. Off. I turned the lights off. Okay. Be careful with that one. It's not of. It's not a bag of sugar. It's off. Okay. How do we make it off instead of of? What do we need to do? Okay. All good? Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've done our spellings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Should we go through them? Let's give it a go, okay? Now, take a different colour pencil. Uh, if you don't have another colour pencil or pen, not to worry. All you need to do, remember, same as always, draw a line underneath it if you get it wrong. Um, and write out the correct way to spell it next to it. That way, when you look over your spellings again later on today, which I highly recommend that you do later on this afternoon, just to recap on them, you'll be able to see, ah, that's how we spell it. That's what I need to remember, that correct spelling, okay? Um... And obviously then we do them again tomorrow. That's the best way. We, go, we, we learn by repetition, which means by repeating it. Okay, you ready? Let's go through. Remember, give them a take if you got them right. Okay, so first one. Put, 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 put. Could, could old uncles lead dogs. That's how I remember it. Could old uncles lead dogs. House, house, huh, house, house. Old, old, oh, old. Two. Now there's the correct spelling for two. When it's too many, you put two os. Oh, oh. If it's just one off, oh, that'll be I'm writing to tell you about something. It's, it's that was this two as is in um, describing how big things are. Too big or too small. Uh, by, I live by a park. Uh, day, well, I think you know how to spell day to A, that lovely A sound, uh, yeah. Maze, there's a split diagraph, A, m A with the E eh on the end that we don't sound out. And time, same as that one, the I, the it becomes an I because of the E eh on the end. I'm, now here's the abbreviated one, I am, we can take away the A, put an apostrophe, and it becomes I'm. It's really useful in our writing because it's a little bit more casual. And saying, I am here today, or I am doing this. Um, I, I'm is just a more of a casual way of saying it. Uh, if, if, if I was a rich man. Uh, help, help. Mrs. Called. Oh my goodness, it's raining so hard. Uh, here, uh, off, there we go, there's off, now we're not, uh, of, it's only got one F, okay, it's not a V, it's not a V, it's a F, off, and then off is two Fs, okay, that turns it from of to off, and that's your lot, there we go, brilliant, how did you get on guys, how many did you get, did you get 16 out of 16 today, 
I'm not expecting anyone to get 16 out of 16 today, but we certainly should do by Friday. Awesome sauce. Well done, everybody. Give yourself a big marshmallow clap. <laughs> Woohoo! It is so rainy. Uh, we're going to keep going. I hope you can all hear me, right? Well done, Chloe. Fantastic. I need a capital I. Yeah, so for I'm would be a capital I. That was my mistake. Sorry, that capital, uh, that I needs a capital I there. Uh, brilliant stuff. Well done, everyone. Marshmallow claps all around. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Well done, well done, well done. Right, let's keep this ball rolling. Let's keep going. Let's get crack a lacking on our times tables. Terrific times tables. Oh, yeah, terrific times tables. And today we are looking at the fantastic, the delicious, the edible four times table. I don't know why I said edible. You can't eat it, but you could if you want. Um, four times tables. So we've done, so far, we've done the twos. Fives, tens, uh, threes, sixes. We're now going to do the four times table, okay? Let's see if we can count up in groups of four. I'm not expecting you to do this today, okay? I'm not expecting it to happen today. I need to think about this as well, because I'm not good at counting at fours. You know what I was like last week with the sixes. Monday, our oh, rubbish. Let's, let's try together, okay? You ready? Off we go. Four, eight, twelve... 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40. Yes! I always panic about counting up my first time. I haven't done it in a while. Oh, that is tricky. That is tricky. Now, this is the hardest bit. We've got to try and count backwards, okay? Like I said, not expecting anyone to do this today. This is just for you to listen to how the pattern goes, okay? Have a think while we say this one. Uh, what patterns do you already notice? Okay, Milo's here. Milo's in the shed. Good morning, Milo. Okay, you ready? Starting at 40, counting back. 40. 36. 32. 28. Is that right? Yeah, 24. 20, Ooh, okay, halfway, 16, 12, 8, 4, 0, oh yes, yes, it's got, yeah, 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 did he get it? <laughs> so hard, counting in groups is really tricky, it is really hard, I'm not going to lie, it is a hard thing to do, but hey, the more we practice, the better we get at it, okay. So, let's have a little look at our four times table then. So, one times four is four, two times four is eight, three times four is twelve, four times four is sixteen, five times four is twenty, six times four is twenty-four, uh, seven times four is twenty-eight, eight times four is thirty-two, nine times four is thirty-six, ten times four is forty, and eleven times four is forty-four, and twelve times four is forty-eight. Looking at those numbers there then, what do you notice? What do you notice? What patterns do you notice? Are there any same numbers that are popping up? Are there any things that you go, hey, I know that because I know this and this and this. I think there's gonna be quite a few things we notice with the four times table because there are lots of little sneaky, cheeky, leaky, weaky, peaky patterns that are really good for us to spot now, which is gonna make it easy for us to learn, okay? So, four times table, hmm, right, well, I'm going to tell you one thing off the top that we already know, you already know your two times table, don't you? Two add another two, what's that? Hello, that's four, hey, same as our sixes last week, we said we knew some of our six times table because we knew our threes, same as our four times table, our fours, we already know some of them because they appear in the two times table, don't they? Yeah? The other thing that we also are going to know, indirectly, if we know our fours, we're going to know our eights. Because four is half of eight. What? Hang on a minute, Mr. Page. You're saying that actually I already know most of this and I'm going to indirectly learn my eight times table as well? Oh, yes. That's how easy it is, okay? By making these connections makes it so much easier to understand that actually what you're learning is not massive, you already know quite a lot of it because you already know those earlier steps. Okay, so what do we know about a four times table? Well, 
all our answers are even, aren't they? All are all even. Well done to those people that are saying that it's all even. Absolutely. There's four times table. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen. They're all even numbers. What's an even number? Well, they can be paired up, can't they? They have a partner. They can be split equally into two. Because four, we know, is an even number. It can be split into two and two, can't it? Yeah. That would still mean, so if you're timesing anything by four, it's going to be an even number. Even number. Right, what else do we know? We're adding two, uh, sorry, adding four to the previous answer. Same as any of our multiplication. All we're doing is adding the same number next to each other. Brilliant. We can see that now. We can get that. What else? Our answers end in, okay, in our units column, the answers end in the following. Four, eight, two, six, or zero. That's it, okay? Same as our sixes that we looked at last week when we had six, and we had a two, uh, and then an eight, and it kind of had followed a pattern. So does this one. Let's write it down. Let me show you. So four, one times four is, oops, the daisy. One times four is four. Two times four is, sorry, not one. Oh, Mr. Bates, that's not right. I know, I got it wrong. Um, is eight. And then we've got 12. And then we've got uh, 16. And then we've got 20. Hang on a minute. 20, that's halfway, isn't it? We're already halfway to 40. We already know that. We already know that 5 times 4 is 20 because we know our 5 times table. But hey, look at these. Look at the numbers, how they go up. 4, 8. There's 2 in the, col two in the units column. 6 in the unit column. 0 in the units column. If I then continued this num up, so thinking about my next one, so that my six, six times four, six times four would be, uh, six times four would be 24. Uh, seven times four is 28. Uh, then we've got uh, eight times four is 32. Then we've got 36. Then we've got uh, 40. Hey, look at this. Again, we've got these sneaky numbers. Four, eight, two, six, zero. Can you see the connections between the two? Okay. Awesome. Really lovely that we can see those patterns all going up. Because it will really help us when we get a little bit further on. Um, also, it's double two, isn't it? We know our two times table, like we mentioned, it's double two. One times two is two. Two times two is four. Hey, hang on a minute. Two times two is four. Well, that means one times four is four. Okay. Because we can see that pattern going up two dots of four, okay? Brilliant. Right, you'll go then. Let's give these a go, okay? Like I always say, don't worry if you get these wrong. Just write down the correct answer next to it. Give them a go for you. This is going to be the first time some of you have ever done your four times table. And I'm not expecting anyone to get that right straight away. We're not all superheroes uh, and be able to do it straight away. We need to practice it. That's where we get better. I know I couldn't get things straight away if I just was asked to do it. So don't. I'm not expecting you to. Okay, give it a go then. Have a little go. Try and count up in fours. Six times four. Six times four. Remember, you know your five times table. And actually, we did six times four last week. Didn't we? So you're going to know a lot of these already. That's the brilliant thing about the times tables. Once you've learned a few of them, you've kind of learned most of them. Okay, because they're reversible, aren't they? Six times four, oh, I don't know what six times four is, but I know what four times six is. Well, there we go, it's the same answer. Okay, six times four. Cast your mind back to last week if you can't remember. Okay, next one. Four times four. Four, add another four, add another four. Four, add another four, add another four, add another four. That's <laughs> four lots of four. Four, eight, twelve. Hmm, what's next? Think about that pattern. Think about that pattern. Okay, four times four. Next one. One times four. Oh, it's so tricky, that one. Oh, Mr. Bates, you've given us a really hard one, that one. Ooh, it's so hard. <laughs> That's not a good accent, that one. Four times four. Oh, sorry, one times four. Not four times four. You've already done that. One times four. Next one, ten times four. <laughs> come What? Four, come on. Give us some in ours. <laughs> we know that one. I'm sure you do. Ten times four. Okay. 
Next one, eight times four. Now this one's a little tricky. We haven't done an eight times table yet, so we might just have to count up the amount in fours, okay? Think about that pattern. Or think about our 10 times four, and then take away one group of four, and then take away another group of four. Okay? I find that, well, I find eight hard. That's hard for me in my head. It might not be hard for you, okay? Think about the patterns that we know. Four, and four, and four, and four, until we've added eight times. Okay? Four, and four, and four, and four, and four, and four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a lot of fours. Have a go, have a go. What might be easier is eight, add eight, add eight, add eight. Same thing, isn't it? Same thing. That's just eight four times, or four eight times. Okay, next one. Seven times four. Seven times four. Again, think of those patterns. You know what five times four is. It's halfway, isn't it? Halfway between that and ten times four. I don't want to give too much away. It's halfway. Okay, so then go, right, well, I'm at 20. And then I need to add another four. And then add another four. Well, don't give me the answer, you sneakies. Oh, God. That was so sneaky. You sneaked that out of me. Next one, five times four. You guys have got that one. You guys know that one. Five times four. I know you know that one. Five, and another five, and another five, and another five. Five. Okay, next one. Two times four. Two times four, that's hard. Two times four. Well, whenever we times by two, all we're really doing is adding the number against each other, isn't it? So four, add another four. I'm sure you can all do that. You can do that on your fingers. You can do that on your fingers. Two times four. Next one then, please, Mr. Bates. Okay. Nine times four, dear. Oh, nine times four, dear. Mm. Again, if you're not sure of your nine times table, understandable, we haven't learned it yet, but you would know what ten times four is, okay? Ten times four. Take away one lot of four, that would then give you nine times four, wouldn't it? Okay? It's all about how we get there, okay? I don't mind which journey you take, whether you add four, add another four, add another four, do that nine times, whether you go on, I know... 10 times 4 and I'm going to take a 4 away. It's about using the knowledge that we've got in a way that's going to help us. Okay, 9 times 4. And then we got 3 times 4. 3 times 4. Okay, 3 times 4. And I think that's the last one. It is indeed. Super, let me run through the questions then. So we have got 6 times 4, 4 times 4, 1 times 4, 10 times 4, 8 times 4, 7 times 4, 5 times 4, 2 times 4, 9 times 4, and, excuse me, 3 times 4, okay? We're going to go through these answers now. I really don't want anybody to worry if they've got lots of these incorrect. It doesn't matter, okay? It really doesn't matter. What I'm trying to do is get you to see the patterns in number, because I know sometimes looking at that, you go, that's really confusing. It looks like loads of numbers, and I don't really know what to do. Hey, there's lots of patterns that we can spot. If you can spot the patterns, it's going to help you understand where those numbers fit. Okay. All right, let's go through them. Remember, give them a tick if you got them right. If you got them wrong, just write down the answer next to it. Okay. So six times four is twenty-four. Four times four is a uh, sixteen. Sorry. One times four is four. Ten times four is forty. Eight times four is 32, 7 times 4 is 28, 5 times 4 is 20, it's that halfway point isn't it, 2 times 4, well, that's easy, 8 isn't it, 4 add another 4, 9 times 4 is 36, if you weren't sure 10 times 4 would be 40 and then just take away one for a lot of 4 which would give you 36, and our last one 3 times 4 is 12. Well done, everybody. How many did you get right today? Do let me know in the comments box and give yourself a big marshmallow clap. <laughs>
Brilliant stuff, guys. Well done. Really well done. Super duper job. You're doing super. You're doing a super job. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Uh, awesome. Uh, really well done, guys. It's, like I said, marshmallow clap for everyone. Ooh, ah, ee, ah, ooh, ooh, marshmallow. Um, we're going to be doing more on the four times tables tomorrow. Um, like I said, the more that we practice it, the better we become. The more then, what tends to happen when we learn things like this, is then actually you don't really have to think about it. It's just there. It's just knowledge that you just have, that you just pull out. Um, but the only way you get to that stage is by doing it over and over and over and over and over. Okay? It can be. Like I said, it's, it's, look. Some people go, Mr. Bates, that's really boring, though. It's really boring. Look, it, it, it can be a little bit, but it's making it fun and spotting patterns, okay? And we just have to keep powering through. Because you're doing a fantastic job. Look, hey, if you had said, if I'd asked you six weeks ago, would you know your six times table, uh, you'd probably go, no, I've never, never done it before. Hey, but now you've smashed it and you know exactly what's going down. Uh, awesome. Right. Here we go. Um, Mighty Mouse, we're going to do a little bit of maths now. Mighty Mouse, you ready? Mighty Mouse time. Oh, Mighty Mouse. Oh, yes, Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse for me and you. And this week we are going to be looking at number bonds. Now, really important with maths, number bonds. Number bonds. Now, what is a number bond? Uh, no, especially number bond to 10. Well, let's break it down. Two numbers that add together equal the value of 10. So when we're looking at number bonds to 10, we're looking at the two numbers that can go together that make 10. Okay, we do number bonds anyway, and number bonds just go together and we break them down into normally the units and the tens. We bond them together to make a whole number. For example, if we had a three and a 10, and we put three as the units, 10 is the tens, we add them together and it makes 13. That's the number bond. But when we're having number bonds to 10, which means we're adding two numbers together to make the round whole number that is 10. Um, and it's really, really important that we can get number bonds in our heads. Why? Because number bonds are come up so much, particularly when we're adding, taking away, when we've got to use money, when we're using uh, measurement. It's really great for us to be able to have number bonds to 10 in our heads at that place where you can just put it out. You don't really have to think about it, it just comes out. Bang, 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 bang. All right? Let's break it down. Let's have a little look at these number bonds. Now, some of you, you might already know these. You might know your number bonds very, very easily. Some of you might be a little bit harder, all right? But what we need to get to a level is, like I said, we need to get to that where we know our number bonds like that. If I said seven, you'd say three, because that's what goes together to make ten, okay? If I said two, you'd say Let's look at them first. Okay, let's look at them first. So there they are. There are the number bonds to 10. They are the lovely pairings of those two sweet, sweet numbers that go together to make that round one. So important. There's only five there to remember. That's it. That's all you need to remember. One add nine equals 10. Two add eight equals 10. Three times seven equals 10. Four times, four add, sorry, did I say times? I didn't mean times. Four add six equals 10, and 5 add 5 equals 10. That's it. They're the number bonds. They're the number bonds to 10, okay? They are reversible. So when I say that, I mean that you could have 9 add 1 equals 10, okay? Same as the top one, isn't it? Just the other way around. Um, you could also then have 10 equals 9 plus 1. 10 equals 1 plus 9. Same thing, okay? Same thing, different way around, okay? But fundamentally, what we need to get into our heads is those number bonds. What two numbers go together to make 10? Bang, okay? Five and five, six and four, seven and three, eight and two, and nine and one. Whack. That's what we need to get into our little noggins. Into our little brain holes. Come on, in my brain hole. Come on, up my earlobe. In you go. <laughs> All right? So that's what we're going to be looking at a lot this week, those number bonds to 10. Here we go. Let's have a little think about this one now. So we've got some number bonds here, and it's been broken down for us. So it's got there 10, and it's got the... The, uh, the, it's been broken down into units and tens. Mm, I don't totally agree with the way they've laid that out. But it's broken it down into the number bond, hasn't it? Zero and ten. Zero and ten equals ten. Ten add zero equals ten. And ten take away zero equals ten. Do you agree at home? 
Does that make sense to you? That all those uh, calculations are the same. And the number bond, 10 and 0, make 10. Do you agree at home? I hope you do, because that is correct. Of course it is. 10 and 0 make uh, 10. Let's look at the next one then. 10, splitting down into 9 and 1. 1 and 9 make 10. 9 and 1 make 10. 10 take away 1 equals 10. Uh, sorry, 10 take away... Uh, blah, blah, blah. 10 take away 1 equals 9. And 10 take away 9 equals 1. Okay? There's a splitting and it's that reversible over the side of the uh, equals there. Awesome. And again, that last column there has got 8 and 2. 8 and 2 make 10. 2 and 8 make 10. And then we can also do the subtraction of that uh, number sentence. 10 take away 8 equals 2 and 10 take away 2 equals 8. Okay, does that all make sense to you? I hope it does because now it's your turn, okay? I would like you to fill in the gaps, okay? Draw those three out on your paper. Ten, what two numbers, what go, well, what number goes with seven to make ten, and then can you put it into a number sentence? Like we've done above, something add seven equals ten. Reverse it, okay? Switch it over. Seven add something equals ten. And then can you do the takeaways as well? Can you do the inverse of that uh, number sentence? You've got three columns to do, all right? Arthur's already done it, apparently. That was incredibly quick if you've done that already, Arthur. I'm not sure if I totally believe you, Mr. Moore. Uh, right, you ready? Uh, I'm gonna give you two minutes on the clock. You guys are working super hard today. I'm really, really impressed. Let's get this done. Two minutes, off you go. Give it a go. Do let me know when you have finished. Click that like button on YouTube and drop me an emoji on Facebook. Keep going guys. Brilliant stuff, everybody. Brilliant stuff. You guys are awesome, awesome. Right, I was just going to write out the first one for us. Um, so, 10. We know that what goes with 7 to make 10. Well, it is, of course, the number 3. 3 goes with 7 to make 10. So, 7 and 3 make 10. 3 and 7 make 10. We can then also do the inverse, which is taking away. 10 take away 7 equals 3. 
And 10 take away 3 equals 7. Okay, all good? All got that? Brilliant stuff. There we go. There's the 3. There's our little sums there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's have a look at the next one. So what goes with 6 to make uh, a number bond? Of course, it's got to be the number 4. 6 and 4 make 10. And again, there we go. 6 and 4 make 10. 6 and 4, sorry, 4 and 6 make 10. 6 and 4 make 10. 10 take away 6 equals 4, and 10 take away 4 equals 6. It's so good when you get it, mate. Um, and then, of course, that lovely one, 5, and 5 equals uh, 10. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Uh, and um, let's have a little look at the sums there. 5 and 5 are 10, and of course, 10 take away 5 equals 5. That's, that's the only two you can do there, because they're the same number. You can't do the inverse, you can't switch them around, because... They're the same. Brilliant stuff. Give yourself a big marshmallow club. <laughs> awesome. Well done, guys. Lovely stuff. Really, really, really quite delicious. Right, we're going to do a little bit of English now. Fantastic. We've got a couple more minutes uh, till the end of the lesson. Well, we've got a bit of English, then we've got a bit of phonics to come as well. And you guys are doing a fantastic job. Let's have a little look at our English today. Okay, so today in English, we're looking at things called first, second, and third person. Okay, what does that mean, first, second, and third person? You may have heard people saying, or oh, you're speaking in the third person, or speaking in the second person. And it's, let's break it down. Okay, so when we are writing, we can write in different people, which means it, different points of view. So, a point of view. A story can be told from different points of view. It can be written in the first, second or third person. And here's some examples. I was going to the fun fair today. I was so excited. So that I is talking from the first person. It means it's talking about you. It's as if you're there. Most of the time when we, we write in our books, and particularly in our diaries, we're writing as if it's happening to us then. I went to the beach. I had a great time. I had ice cream. Uh, it was really fun. It's from the first person. It means it's talking about you. Have you ever wondered what life would be like as a superhero? Have you ever wondered what life would be like as a superhero? That is obviously not talking about you as a self, it's asking somebody else, it's asking questions or talking in conversation with a second person. So that is in the second person. Have you ever wondered, it's as if there's two people there and you're having a conversation with somebody. And the last one, the boys ran from the house screaming, Riley was terrified. Now that piece of writing is written in the third person, meaning that it's as if you are removed from the action that's going on. So the boys ran from the house screaming. If we tend to read a story, it's normally in the third person because it's about what's going on. Stacy and Pamela had an amazing time at the beach. It's removing ourselves in the writing. We're not there. It's talking about people that are, uh, uh, that are there in the story, okay? It'd be different if it was, uh, me and Pamela went to the beach because then that would be in the first person because I'm talking as if I'm there. If I'm talking about stuff that's removed, the dog and the cat had a great time on the boat. It's removed, it's in the third person. Okay, let's have a little look. If writing a story in the first person, write as though you are a character inside the story. So, the pronouns we can use, and we looked at pronouns earlier in the summer, pronouns being possessions of you. So, things like my, me, mine, we, so it could be collective, our, ours, and us. These are all things when you're talking about yourself. They're personal pronouns. They're personal to you. Describe how you are describe how you feel and what you're going what you're doing or have done so it's describing how you have felt use the pronoun I for example last year I went to Spain with my family I loved it okay that pronoun personal pronoun I I went there first person 
writing about you as if you are there. You are in the story, okay? Best way. First person, you are number one first. Second person, if writing in a second person, talk to the reader directly. So if you are writing, you'll use things like yours, your, other pronouns that cover them. So things like you could use you. The second person is used a, a lot, not used a lot in non-fiction as well as in fiction texts. You have to do this in instructions. It's you. It's normally in the second person. You need to add the flour. Next, you need to add the butter. It's telling you, as the reader, somebody who's reading it, directions of what you need to do. It's written in the second person. Okay? For example, before you begin, make sure you have all of the tools listed above. Okay? It's telling the reader things to do or giving them direction, isn't it? You, yours. And third person. If you're writing in the third person, you write about other people or characters. This is what we tend to do when we're story writing. We're writing about other people, not ourselves. We're not in the story. So you can use things like hers, his, his uh, theirs as well, their uh, party. You use the character's name or pronoun uh, such as he, she or they. For example, uh, Michelle, is that Michelle? See, this is what I get tricky with names. Dyslexic, sorry. Um, <laughs> Michelle, I don't know, Michelle, whatever. Sped off at the top speed and was soon in first place. She couldn't believe that she was going to win. Okay? She was going to win. So she is talking about her. You're not there. You're removed from the conversation. You're not in this. You're. It's kind of like... You're watching a story play out. You're watching something. So she believed. It's all about, it's like you're the narrator. Okay? That's third person, third person. Decide if the following sentences are the first, second, or third person. Okay? So let's have a little look at these. We're going to work out which ones are first, second, or third. Sophia was going to the cinema to meet her friends. What do you think at home? Is that the first, second, or third? In the comments box, you can write number one, number two, or number three to decide if it's the first person, second person, or the third person. What is that piece of writing? Is it in the first, second, or third? I'd love you to let me know. First, second, or third. Sophia was going to the cinema to meet her friends. Is it talking about you? I. Is it talking about, is it talking directly to the reader? Or is it kind of describing it as if it's playing out? I think it's going to be the da, 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 third person, isn't it? Well done if you think third at home. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. It's the third because we're removed from it, aren't we? The story's going on. Sophia um, was going to the cinema to meet her friends. It's about what's going on. We're not there. There's no I. It's not just talking directly to the reader. It's the third person. Well done. How about this one? I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was incredible. Okay, is that the first person, second person, or third person? I think you're going to know this, because I think you guys have got this. How about this one? I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was incredible. First, second, or third? Is it as if the writer is there? Is it as if the writer is talking directly to the reader? Or is the writer removed from the scene? What do you think? First, second, Third. Ho, 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 ho. Let's have a little look then. Of course it's the first person. Well done if you thought that at home. Brilliant. It's the first person because it's I. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Okay, it's first person. Okay, remember first I. It's as if you are there. How about this one? Where shall we go now? Wondered Tim and Holly as they sat in the car. Where shall we go now, wondered Tim and Holly, as they sat in the car. Is it first person, second person, or third person? Remember, first person's as if you are there. It's as if that writer is actually there. I, I, I. Uh, second person is talking directly to the reader. Uh, and the third person, as if the, the scene is playing out in front of them. 
They're, they're narrating it. They're telling you what's going on. Let's have a little look. It's the third person, okay? It's not talking directly to the reader because they're talking about what's going on. Third person. Because can you see wondered Tim and Holly as they sat in the car? It's as if that is playing out in front of them. They are narrating what's going on. Okay? How about this one then? Do you believe in ghosts? Well, after reading this story, you will. What do you think that one is? Is that first, second or third? I'll read it to you again. Do you believe in ghosts? Well, after reading this story, you will. What do you think? Is that first person, as in writing about I, I did this, went to the beach, I had that. Second person, is it talking directly to the reader? Or is it third person? Is a scene playing out and then narrating on what's going on? First, second or third? Shall we give it a go? Shall we find out? This one definitely is second person, isn't it? Can you hear that in the writing? Do you believe in ghosts? Well, after reading this story, you will. It's as if the writer is talking directly to you at home, isn't it? Yeah? That second person. That second person. It's when they're talking directly to you, the person that's reading it. Okay? How about this one? As I walked into my new school, my stomach churned and my hands began to shake. There's a big fat clue in there. Is it first, second or third? First, second or third? I'm going to teach you a little trick as well to help you remember what is first, second and third as well. The great way that I remember it. First, second or third. As I walked into the new school, my stomach churned and my hands began to shake. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. <laughs> is it first, second or third person? Okay. It is. Shall we find out? Brilliant stuff. Of course, it is first person. As I walked in. The reader is writing it from their point of view. It's I, okay? Really good way to remember this. If you ever get stuck and you're not too sure of first, second or third. First, number one, looks the same as I, doesn't it? Number one, I. Great clue. I I, 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 uh, I walked into my new school. I, it belongs to me, so therefore it must be the first person. Okay, first person, first person, 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 person. Um, and uh, two, whoop, two, there are two points in a two. Can you see that one and two? Meaning there are two people, meaning two people talking. Two people, meaning that the writer is talking directly to you. One, two, there are two people, okay? Two people. And three, one, two, three, it is you are removed from the situation. You are removed from that situation. There's as if there are three people. One, two, three. Can you see the three points? Oh, you can't quite see on the three. There's three points in a three, which means there's three people. You need to imagine there's three of you. One, two, three. Two people talking, and you're just watching, okay? You're the narrator. You're telling about what's going on. One last one then, guys. I think this is the last one. Uh, how about this one? Are you an early bird or are you a night owl? Which means, do you go to bed early or do you stay up really late? Are you an early bird or an, an, uh, are you a night owl? Is that written in the first, second or third person? Is it I? Is it talking about I? Is it asking the reader a question or is it narrating the action that's going on? First, second, third. What do you think? Last one. Last one. Honestly, doing a super job today, guys. Fantastic job. What do you think? Well, of course, it is the second person. Because it's asking you directly a question, isn't it? Are you... An early bird or a night owl is asking you. Well done if you got that at home. You. I am now talking in the second person because I'm talking to you. Mr Bates was talking to the children at home. 
via the uh, Facebook Live and YouTube Live. That's me talking in the third person. I am having a fantastic time. I love being in the shed. That's me talking in the first person. See, yeah, it's like a, you can try that at home, see how you get on. Right, uh, ooh. No, oh, that was crazy. Um, oh, well, never mind. Uh, change the passage from this. We're going to change the passage, um, but I'm, I'm very aware we've actually run out of time today. Uh, change the passage into third person. I'm just going to flip that back just so we can have a little look over it. Um, it's quite a big task for us to do, actually, and I cut it down, but it's still a bit tricky. So let's just have a quick look over this one then. Hey, Mr. Man. So, uh, no, um, uh, ooh, uh, the bell, the bell, the So, it says change the passage from first to third person. Quite tricky for us to do today. A lot of writing. I'm not going to get you to rewrite that all today because I'm aware that we are out of time. Um, change the passage from first person to third person. So, Mr. Craver looked at me and said, who's picking you up from school, Sarah? Uh... I'm not sure, I replied nervously. I was worried that Mum would be late and that I would have to stay behind with him. I'm just going to look at that first sentence. So, is it written in the first person at the moment? It's as if you are Sarah. I, I'm not sure. If we were to change that to the third person, we would have to go, we'd have to change some things. Mr. Craven looked at Sarah. Who's picking you up today from school? Said Mr. Craver. Uh, I'm, uh, no, it wouldn't be, I'm not sure, would it be, said, um, uh, Sarah said, I'm not sure, mm, let's just have a look, let's have a look, there we go, yeah, so we'd need to add in some more dialogue, some more, um, more, uh, words that the narrator would say, Mr. Craven looks at Sarah and said, who's picking you up from school today, Sarah, I'm not sure, Sarah replied nervously, she was worried that her mum would be late and that she would have to stay behind with him okay but hey all I really want you to be able to do is to understand what first person second person and third person writing consists of if you can notice that that is absolutely brilliant okay have a think about it today try talking in the first person I did this I did that and then try saying the same conversation in a second second person when would you do this I'm asking you direct questions and try it in the third which normally just use first and third, personally. Uh, anyway, uh, give yourself a big marshmallow clap. <laughs> Woo Brilliant stuff. Well done, everybody. Now, I was going to do a little bit of phonics, but we have run out of time today. We have ran out of time, unfortunately. Um, awesome, awesome work today, everybody. You've done a fantastic job. Wicked, wicked stuff. Wicked, wicked stuff. Wicked, wicked stuff. Wicky stuff. Wicky, wicky stuff. Wicky, 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 wicky stuff. Um, wiki stuff. It's like WikiLeaks. 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 Um, perfect. Big special thanks to our partners. Twinkle, www.twinkle.co.uk. Um, and of course, White Rose Masks. Do check them out. www.whiteroseMasks.com. WhiteRoseMasks.com. Awesome guys, well done everybody. Hey, that was a wicked start to the week. I feel brilliant already, that's awesome. Got some spellings down, got that four times table. We got loads of stuff just ticking away in that little brain box. By Friday, we are going to be on fire, on fire. Um, we better say hello to Mr. Monkey, shouldn't we? He's been away all weekend, he's been camping, I think. Let's find out what he's been doing. Uh, Mr. Monkey, where have you been, buddy? And how are you, buddy? Good. Good weekend. Where did you go? You went camping, didn't you? Yeah. Was it fun? Yeah. What did you camp in? A hammock. Wow, that's cool. A banana hammock. Of course, it was a banana hammock. Um, where's your shoes? What? You got hot. Oh, okay. And your hat? You got hot again. No way, not to worry, not to worry, that's fine. Uh, well, understandable. Um, anything we need to tell the boys and girls today? Obviously, it's Monday, we've had a wicked weekend. Anything we need to tell them? Of course, we need to tell you that um, we have put the 
uh, Shed School Silly Poems book up on the Facebook page. If you are watching on YouTube, do head over to Facebook. Um, it's up on there. I think it's 32 pages of silly poems written by the Shed School crew. This um, we wrote earlier in the year, didn't we? Yeah, we did it at the after school club with your your guys. Your guys? With your guys. Um, you guys sent in poems. And then I drew pictures to match the poems. It is now up on the Facebook page. If you want to print it all off, you just print off the photos. It is all up there for you. Um, and if you would like to, um, there is a PayPal donations page. Um, if you'd like to give a donation for the book itself, you're more than welcome to, um, but that's entirely optional. Um, it's up there for you, um, which is all there um, on a previous post. I think I, pre I posted it yesterday. I posted it yesterday. Yeah, I did post it yesterday, yeah, I did. Um, so yeah, please do uh, download it, print it off. I know loads of you guys that are watching now are in that book. It's awesome, it's awesome. I have got a copy of the book somewhere. I know we were going to get books printed, but it was just too expensive and I couldn't afford it. Um, yeah, I know, I know. What? You should, ow, don't hit me in the nose. That's not very nice. Ow, don't do that. I should have gotten printed. I know I didn't. I know I don't have the money. Ow, all right. So, um, boys and girls, yeah, do get on to that. And also, of course, download the Magic Spell app for iPhone and Android. It is out now. You can download it. It's from Brainbox Games. Once you're onto the game and you can see your wand, uh, those little players will know what I mean, tap that top gold coin ten times and you will be entered into the Shed School League. Um, the league is live at the moment. We are going to be holding some fantastic competitions later in the year. So do download it now. Get your practicing in because we're going to be doing a competition very, very soon. Um, and I want you guys to have it already there on your phone, ready to go. So you don't miss out on this competition. All right. Brilliant. We better go. Um, yeah, we've got, we've got so much things to do today. Right. We will see you uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Have a wicked day. Um, anything else? That's it. Stay safe. Stay creative. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock, everybody. See you later. Bye.